This lecture is about consent as it is used in the intentional torts. To understand this area of law, let's begin by making sure that we understand what we mean by consent. The consent issues come up primarily in the assault and battery uh, intentional torts. Almost all the cases are about that. The, um, to understand it, let me imagine that I'm walking along the street uh, and you can imagine that there's kind of a zone of privacy about me that the public is willing to enforce, to protect. That is to say, uh, I, if I'm walking along the street, people can't walk up and touch me if I don't want to be touched or create the apprehension that I'm going to be touched. And so there's this kind of little zone of privacy and people can't come in there unless I give them consent to do so. Uh, and, and so uh, the consent that we're talking about here is that consent consenting someone to come into that zone of privacy and let make me think that I'm going to be touched or actually uh, make the contact. Now, uh, if I am deceived and I give this consent because of some deception, my privacy has still not been invaded. I gave the consent. And so I may have some cause of action for the deception, but my, the, the person who entered this space did not violate uh, me because I gave them consent to do it. And so the, the, in that case, the, uh, the consent is effective to a lawsuit. Now with that in mind, you can see that the main issues are, number one, was consent actually given to someone to come into my space? And was that consent effective? You can imagine situations where the consent would not be effective, might not be effective. Certain people don't have the power, the legal power to give consent for certain things. Uh, consent by fraud, consent by mistake. People you give consent to a touch in a certain way, the person exceeds the consent. So there are all kinds of problems here as to whether or not the consent will be effective. And this is one of the major parts of this area of consent. So our big problems are was consent given and was the consent effective? The next general issue before we get to the details is uh, to note that objective standards will be used and that means that if you're asking was consent given by impl implied consent given, we will apply uh, objective standards and we'll ask would a reasonable person in the position of this defendant believe that he or she had been given consent? That's our objective standard. And finally, a point of interest here is that the lack of consent in all of the intentional torts except trespass to land, the absence of consent is a part of the prima facie case of the plaintiff. In other words, the plaintiff has to prove that I did not give consent for them to take my hat off the hat rack. I did not give consent for this person to touch me. So the plaintiff has to plead and claim and prove that I did not give consent. Now you don't normally see it because uh, the analysis kind of is not presented that way, but all of the textbooks and process will tell you that that's part of the, uh, the uh, plaintiff's prima facie case and so it's a point of law you should be aware of in case it comes up. So our key points here so far are, uh, was consent given? Was it effective? Use objective standards. And this is something to keep in the back of your mind I've never seen a situation where it gets used, <clears throat> but it could come up in a multiple choice question. Consent given. Let's look at express consent first. Express consent. When, when you give express consent, here are a number of circumstances under which people give express consent, and there are certain issues that come up in these circumstances. This is what gets tested. First, in the medical cases, people give uh, express consent to hospitals in these hospital consent forms. And the issue there used to be that some doctor went beyond the consent that was given in the form and they'd get sued. And the question would be, did the person really go beyond the consent or not? Well, those cases uh, almost don't exist anymore because the hospital consent forms are so broad that they cover practically everything. And uh, so th those, you don't see those uh, cases anymore and they're unlikely to bring that up on an exam because it's kind of historical almost. But in sports situations where there's expressed consent, people are, uh, 
give express consent to participate in certain sports and they consent to the kinds of touching and so forth you're going to get in football or baseball or whatever it may be. So they have expressed consent to all this kind of contact. Uh, but the way it gets tested is that uh, if you're playing football with someone and the person does something that is outside the rules of the football game and injures this plaintiff, and if the person did that negligently, they tackled the person too hard negligently, then you just use the law of negligence. But if they tackle that person too hard or grab the face mask or whatever they weren't supposed to do intentionally, okay, now you have a battery. And so the distinction between whether the person violated the rules of that game intentionally or negligently make a big difference. And that's what these sports questions are about. Fraud, uh, once again, the, uh, if a person is deceived into giving consent, well, they still gave the consent. And so the consent to enter the space, there's no cause of action for that. The cause of action is for the fraud. Uh, the, uh, uh, you can have, however, a situation where the person is defrauded about the very act itself. Not the reason that I got into the act, but defrauded about what act am I getting into. Uh, an example that's given in some of the textbooks is the example where uh, it says, you pay a male or female prostitute $100 and uh, with a counterfeit $100 bill, and the, and the person consents to the touch, well, they, uh, there's no, no battery, or salt or battery, because the consent was there even though it was obtained by fraud. On the other hand, if you put someone through a false marriage ceremony in order to have sex, and now that person thinks they're having sex within the, the sanctimony of, of marriage and would be seriously offended if this were otherwise, uh, that that person now has been battered. Because they, when they entered into the sexual relationship, they thought they were entering into it as a part of marriage, when in fact they weren't. Okay, and so there's deception about what they're act what they're actually doing. Another example of that person offers someone a pizza, uh, and the uh, these one of the illustrations, uh, see, offers the person a pizza, and the person accepts the pizza, but the pizza is poisoned, and so uh, the person is accepting this this pizza that I'm giving them, but they they think they're accepting a healthy pizza, and they're accepting one that's poisoned. Now there's deception about in the act itself. Okay, now that kind so the consent. Uh, is is you know uh, is ineffective when the uh, deception is in the the event itself. What what are we actually doing? Having sex within marriage or without a marriage? Giving them uh, poison or not giving them poison? Um, the um, um, uh, 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 so that uh, so watch that's that's the fraud situation. Depends on again the summary is if the person was deceived into giving the consent. Well, the consent is still uh, effective. But if the person was deceived as to what they are consenting to, okay, then the consent is not effective. The fraud vitiates the consent. Consent to criminal acts, this comes up when people agree to do mutual combat, uh, and each person has consented to uh, engage in a criminal act. The majority view is that people cannot consent to uh, violate the law, and therefore, Neither of their consents is, is valid, and each person, even though they agree to the mutual combat, can sue the other one for assault and battery. Um, the minority view is that the consent is effective. Some sources uh, put this down as uh, whether or not the consent is effective depends on whether or not uh, the, uh, the, the event involves a breach of the peace. And that is, has been a factor, but the majority minority view seems to be that uh, simply yes and no. Some jurisdictions say you can um, consent to this criminal act and that prevents the, the civil cause of action. Others say you cannot, that even though these people agreed to mutual combat, that they can still sue each other. Mistake, uh, again, just like fraud, if uh, I gave my consent because of a mistake, 
the consent is still valid. Okay. But uh, if you induced the mistake, uh, then you've got fraud and we've got the same situation uh, where there is fraud and uh, apply the fraud rules. No capacity to, to consent. Minors and insane people do not have the capacity to consent. And finally, the protected classes. Uh, if, sometimes, if you're a member of a protected class, you can't waive the right. For example, uh, you work in a, in a construction zone, and OSHA says that you gotta have, you got to wear, wear a hard hat. Well, an employee working in that zone can't waive the right to a hard hat and say to the employer, it's okay, uh, you don't have a hard hat for me, but I don't care. Okay, you can't waive that right. So there's certain rights you really can't waive. The, uh, and so uh, uh, when a person is a member of a protected class, and if they cannot waive the right and they try to waive it, then the, the waiver is ineffective, the consent is ineffective. So these are the kinds of issues that come up where there's expressed consent. Let's now look at the issues that come up with implied consent. The implied consent, first of all, we use objective standards. This means that we will ask the question, would a reasonable person in the position of this defendant have believed that he or she had consent uh, uh, to contact or to whatever it was? Objective standards. Um, please notice that even if the consent is not communicated to the actor, that is to say, I have subjectively actually consented to someone touching me, but I haven't told them, okay? And if they touch me without knowing that, they have not violated my space sense because I really had subjectively consented. And so Prosser points out that, uh, he, that I don't have to have announced my consent. If you, if you can somehow or other prove that I have subjectively consented and the person touched me, and then I later on change my mind and try to claim assault, it doesn't work. And that's what this is about. Even if the consent is not communicated, if the person actually has consented, there's no assault or battery. Uh, you can consent by inaction. The cl classical example here is the, uh, the, the, the boy says to the girl, I'm going to kiss you. She sits there quietly, doesn't do anything, and then he kisses her. Well, she has consented by inaction in that case. By custom, uh, if you had a custom in your community that the umbrellas which are left at the front door of a store Anyone who wants to can pick up and use one of those umbrellas. Okay, then uh, that that custom shows consent uh, by conduct. There's a famous case of this woman who was on a board ship coming into the United States and needed to be vaccinated. She didn't want to be vaccinated, but she held up her arm like this to the person doing the vaccination, and the court said that was uh, consent by conduct. In the sports activities, one who voluntarily participates in a sport obviously consents to the kinds of contact that naturally come out within the rules of that sport. But again, if someone violates the rules negligently, you may have a cause of action in negligence. But to have a cause of action for assault, for intentional uh, tort, you'd have to show that they intentionally violated the rules of the game and caused the assault or battery. And then finally, for a medical emergency, when is there implied consent in the case of medical emergency that's on this board over here. Uh, in the case of medical emergencies, here are the requirements for implied consent. First, the person needs to be incapacitated. That certainly makes sense. There needs to be a serious medical issue requiring immediate action. There must be no indication that the person would not have consented. For example, if the person is wearing a bracelet showing a, a certain religious objection to, uh, to, the pro to the procedure, so no indication that the person would not have consented and a reasonable person would consent. These are the requirements for implied consent when there is a medical emergency. And that really is about uh, is more than you need to know for about consent for purposes of the bar exam. And one thing that might be helpful is that uh, often bar questions uh, come from the uh, illustrations that are in the restatement. Let me give you the source of these examples that I used. 
because you might want to look more into that area because of what I mentioned. The medical cases, we don't really get those much anymore. The sports uh, cases, this is the one where I was explaining to you that uh, if you intentionally violate the rules of the sport and in injure someone, that might be a battery. If you negligently violate the rules of the sport and injure someone, it's probably negligent. Uh, that is from, uh, uh, that's from the restatement second. All of these are the second restatement. Uh, second restatement, and that would be section 50. This would have been an illustration four, five, and six. The fraud example that I gave you about, uh, <coughs> pardon me, uh, deceiving uh, a person into believing that they were married, that uh, that that uh, uh, kind of fraud, that the uh, consent to sex is not effective in that case, but paying the prostitute with a counterfeit hundred dollar bill, the consent is effective. That comes from uh, the, uh, that, those kinds of examples. Our restatement second, that would be uh, section fifty five, and that would be illustration two. Uh, the here and here, this is I uh, gave you about the restatement here. The next ones are the implied consent. I mentioned to you that uh, if the person has subjectively given their com implied consent, imp given their consent, doesn't matter that it wasn't con uh, communicated to the actor. And this is Prosser that is the site on that. Uh, in action, this is the kiss case where the, the boy was sitting by the girl on the park bench and said, I'm going to kiss you, and she did not respond, and he did it anyway. Uh, that is from the uh, restatement, second restatement, that's uh, section 50, illustration 2. Uh, the uh, custom, the umbrella case, is not from any place. Uh, conduct, this is the case where uh, yeah, in fact, we have it on the board here. I'll write it so you can read it. Uh, this is the case where the woman, the vaccination case, where the woman by uh, conduct held her. This was a case where the, the, the SS Canard was bringing people into the United States for immigration purposes in 1891, and all these people needed to be uh, vaccinated. And uh, this woman didn't want to be vaccinated, but she ultimately held her arm up there to get vaccinated, and the court said that's consent by conduct, and that, that vaccination case happened. This is O'Brien versus Cunard, C-U-N-A-R-D, that's the name of the ship, USS Cunard, where that happened. Uh, the sports participation, I've already told you about, the medical emergency, those that, uh, that came from these rules about what is required for a medical emergency uh, these factors here, these uh, are found in the restatement. This is uh, the second restatement, section 62, and this would be illustration. In illustration three, they had a case of a person whose a foot had been run over by a freight train, and they had to amputate the foot and had to do it right away, and you need implied medical con uh, consent uh, in that case, and that was the train example that's illustrated using these factors here at Restatement 62, Illustration 3. Uh, and uh, frankly, that is uh, everything you need to know about consent for purposes of our exam. If you know this stuff, I, I would hope they'd ask you a question about consent. You'd do well. That's the end of this lecture.